Every season of Survivor is a story. There are main characters, sidekicks, comic reliefs, and villains. A good season of Survivor tells a compelling story that has you rooting for someone and against someone else. You will want to watch episode after episode to see what happens next until it all finishes with a hopefully satisfying conclusion. Each story that we look at together will go through one character's journey from beginning to end, from the time that they are introduced until they inevitably get their torch snuffed or win the game. We will look at every character moment and strategic move to determine whether they were a hero or a villain and whether they were a good or bad strategist. And with that, welcome to Once Upon an Island. For reference, we are only going to be observing what the TV show is showing us and what story is being told through the show. No future seasons will be mentioned as the story and characters here have no idea about what happens in those future seasons. All character moments and strategic moves are interpreted with the mindset of what the story is trying to tell us. And with that, if you want to pick who I cover for story videos like this one, then consider supporting Once Upon an Island on Patreon. It only costs a few bucks a month and you can cancel at any time. Links in the description. 39 days. 16 people, one survivor. Courtney Yates, a 26-year-old waiter from New York, was a castaway on Survivor's 15th season, Survivor China. Right out the gate, we see everyone walking through modern-day China as they travel into the wilderness of this beautiful country. We learn from Jeff that this season does not have Exile Island. The cast is down to 16 players for the first time since season 12. They are all going into the game with the clothes on their backs and nothing more. There are two immunity idols in the game, one hidden at each camp and all the players will be participating in a non-religious Buddhist ceremony as a welcome from the locals to China. During this Buddhist ceremony, everyone seems to be having an emotional experience of some sort, except for Courtney. I'm a waitress from New York City, dude. What do you think? Do you think I know how to do any of this stuff? You know, like, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a monk here. Like, I'm tired. I want to go sit back with a lemonade. Like, I don't really want to be, like, bowing 37 times. And we bowed. We bowed for, like, days. Like, we were there forever. I mean, I guess you could count snarkiness as an emotion, but it's not the one I think the show is wanting. This will be fun. After the ceremony, we see everyone split up into two tribes of eight, Fei Long and John Hu. Courtney is on Fei Long and both tribes are given the art of war from Jeff as reading material. Survivor is fully embracing the theme this season in a way they haven't really done since Pearl Island. Sure, they've always incorporated the local culture when the location is the title of the season, but here it feels like they're going all out on it by taking extra steps. Upon arriving at Fei Long, everyone's being overly happy and joyful and this annoys Courtney. Sorry, I am being too irritated. I seem to be like sort of marooned in a land of like flight attendants and Sunday school teachers. Like, come on. I live in a city. Like people who live in, in New York don't don't act like this. <laughs> this is like my own private hell. They're like exactly the kind of people that like I don't like being around who are all like everything's always great. Isn't it amazing? Like you're doing a really good job with that. What do you talk? I'm flight attendant. You're a flight attendant? No I way. am, yeah. You are so cute. But Fei Long goes on to win immunity, and that's all the time we have with Courtney in the premiere episode. I think it is fair to say that so far, the show is setting her up to be a villain, if not the villain of the season. That is, unless we see a change of character from her or someone else emerges to be a bigger villain, you better strap in for a snarky time. She has shown to be someone who gets easily annoyed, and will this be good for her strategically? Probably not, but it will likely be entertaining. Episode 2 starts and everyone is hard at work doing camp chores and ensuring that their shelter will hold up to any more potential rainstorms that are bound to happen here in China because they will happen. Well, everyone is working hard except for one person, John Robert, the professional poker player. Not only is John Robert lazy, but when he is napping in the middle of the day, he snores a lot. <laughs> John Robert snoring goes something like this. John Robert, we all know, he's like the D student of our tribe. He won't do anything. He gets up and then instantly has to go lay down because he's so tired. 
Oh man, I'm about to pass out. Everyone then has a tribe meeting about what work needs to be done to make their living space bearable. And John or Bear says, maybe now is the best time for all of us to just take a step back and rest. We see everyone go, are you serious, John Robert? Followed by a confessional from him saying that, yeah, some people do refer to me as the bad boy of poker. Fei Long does go on to win reward and afterwards the bad boy of poker takes a two hour long nap where he sleeps like a baby. Now in winning that reward, they were allowed to kidnap Jamie from the other tribe until the immunity challenge and. You guys, I just need to get a little bit of rest, please. You've been resting for the last two hours. You need more? You're, you're not right about that. John Robert and Aaron got into a ridiculous bitch fight, and we were all just like, in front of the spy? Really? Are you just gonna give her a map of who doesn't like who? Like, can we not like have a little solidarity for like two seconds while she's here? Courtney's right. Fight after Jamie leaves. Phelan goes on to win immunity, and we move on to episode three, where believe it or not, John Robert is snoring again. Everyone disliked that. As it turns out, whenever John Robert is sleeping at night, he specifically asks for Courtney and Amanda, who are both creeped out by him, though Courtney plays it off. I need to be warm. <laughs> Look, you stop snuggling so much because you scan the girl. I do get kind of a creep vibe from John Robert, and so does Amanda. Neither one of us likes him. I'm sure has noticed that she and I will both go to great pains to not be next to him in the shelter and yet he will just climb in there and he's like i need amanda and courtney by my side you know they keep me warm like i'm gonna keep anyone warm i weigh seven pounds i can't even keep myself warm get off of me what do you want to see, man? call me creepy if you want to but I, I i need to be warm she has a point though Fei Long loses reward, likely because John Robert didn't get enough rest. And then we see Courtney and Todd overhearing James and John Robert talking strategy, where John Robert says, Courtney needs to be the first to go. And James stands up for her and says she has value. But John Robert's like, ah, you just think she's hot and you want to bang her. Yeah, plus you like Courtney. Yeah, no, you know, around. Not the yeah, yeah. I like Courtney. This is the is two million million a million dollars is one thing, but if you can get a million dollars in some ass? No. <laughs> yeah, John Robert's a bit inappropriate is the word I'd use here. But then at the immunity challenge, Courtney does herself no favors by blowing it so, so hard by taking forever to do her part in simply chopping. We haven't seen her get in any alliance, and she's a challenge liability. Plus, she now has obvious physical injuries from the chopping challenge. However, we find out that when Leslie was kidnapped, after the reward challenge loss, she blabbed a bunch of free info to John Hu about Fei Long and says she connected really well with them. So that's a bit worrying. Leslie and Courtney both want to vote out John Robert and are clearly out of the loop with the rest of the tribe. Thankfully, Todd and Amanda say that while right now Courtney is a liability, she will be super valuable come the merge. But then on the flip side, we see John Robert have a tribal discussion about how Courtney needs to go. So. Who has the power in this tribe? At Tribal Council, the vote is revealed. Leslie, the tribe has spoken. Time for the vote. Now, Courtney was not in on voting out Leslie, but at least she is safe. Episode four sees the rivalry of John Robert and Courtney escalate when. Don't touch that, don't touch that. I'm touching it and it's not that hot. So okay, sorry. I was, I was trying you know, to protect I you. I know that you think you're just raising your voice, but I don't like anything about you. And I'm not getting mad at you, so you don't need to get happy. Waking up with Jean Robert still here is just how I knew it would be. He's like a cocky son of a bitch and he sucks so bad, there's no getting out of that. That was like a cautionary, like, careful. I understand, right. but just so you know where I'm coming from, I just I have a gut reaction that I don't like anyone raising their voice to me. I don't give a crap who goes next as long as it's not me. I would prefer it be Jean Robert because he's just so unpleasant and he gets in my face with no matter what I say, he's like just aggressive with me and I'm sick of it. It's worth mentioning that if she were feuding with almost anyone else, these anti-heroic moments would be villainous. But because John Robert is painted as a cocky fool at almost every turn, her fighting with him like she does actually makes her look good. Anyways, they win immunity and in episode five, a twist happens as a boat arrives at their camp. With it comes a note that says, you can steal two players from the other tribe and they realize, crap, John who is going to steal James and Aaron because they've helped us dominate challenges so much, but they have no choice. They pick Sharia and Frosty with the thought that if they do lose immunity, well, at least they can vote out one of them. Now with these two big men gone, John Robert tries to take the leadership role in the camp. And uh, how do you think that goes? I'm going to go check the uh, traps for shrimp. I started the rice. Um, I mean, the rice is basically done. Denise, if you want, um, we, maybe we can sit out that second net. Hey, tribe leader. What's that? Okay, tribe leader. 
I'm not tribe leader. Don't want to be tribe leader. I'm just saying what I want to do. Don't hand out orders. Huh? You don't hand out orders, man. I'm not handing out any orders. Okay. Could you please help me set up the net? And yes, I will. Thank you. Sharia can cook. That's gonna be real helpful for us. Maybe you can make some sort of like a sardine fried rice for uh, for Todd to start out with, and then I'll bring back shrimp, and then you can make shrimp fried rice. That'd be great. I cannot say. Please, can you help me? Oh, uh, sure. You can do this. I love it. I love it. Because you're a woman, you better come over here and cook for us. Yeah, he's really, 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 really like that. The bonding over the hatred of John Robert is stronger than love itself, but Fei Long does go on to win immunity, though it is strange that in the process of doing that, John Hu seems to not be trying except for James. Whatever. Episode 6 sees them winning rewards, so they capture James and he reveals that John Hu was throwing the last challenge to get rid of Aaron and he thinks he's next. On the reward, we see John Robert lust for the girls and be called a creep, but whenever in lust for James, it is funny. Oh my god, you guys! <laughs> oh, this is so nice. I won't lie to you, Frosty and James. That tub looks the most attractive to jump in right now. I tried my best to be as far away from Jean Robert in the bathtub as could possibly happen in that place. He had the one on the far end. I took the one on the other far end. <laughs> James has such a nice butt. <laughs> He was just in the shower, lathering up, he's stripping down, and none of us cared. He has a nice butt, I mean, he just might as well show it off. Why y'all messing with me? Nothing says more about where these two men stand socially in their own tribe than those reactions right there. Courtney doesn't witness this, but is told later about how Todd and Amanda found the idol in the Fei Long camp, and they gave it to James so when John Hu throws again, he can idol one of them out. Despite this brilliant plan though, and despite James trying his best to throw, John Hu wins immunity. So Fei Long decides we'll vote out Sharia, no big deal. But Courtney says, I don't like this, and she goes rogue. All right, so we're in agreement for Sharia tonight, mm -hmm. huh? So after Todd and Amanda's plans went awry, they're like, okay, well, no question about it, we're voting off Sharia, okay? Sharia, Sharia, Sharia. And I'm like, yeah, okay, whatever. But then after thinking about it for a little while, I actually like Sharia. And if it came down to it, of who I thought would vote me out quicker, I definitely think that she would keep me around longer than John Robert. Courtney won't say this until the end of the season, but she's kind of a newbie to the show. She was recruited, basically, and her clear lack of survivor knowledge shines through here, as there is no strategic sense to what she is doing right now. Sharia isn't even going to the jury. Why do this at all unless she isn't thinking about the game? At Tribal Council, Courtney says before Sharia and Frosty came over, she felt on the outs with her tribe, and Todd is like, whoa, I take offense to this. With that, the bad boy poker says, I have to break my silence on the issue we are all thinking about. Yes, it is true, I am amazing. I'm certain that some of the people do not like me. I'm a bad boy, sometimes that happens. But you know, even as a bad boy and being aggressive, I like the way I'm playing this game, and. I think I'm doing just fine. Bad boy, not quite the term I would have perhaps selected. Do you have a Harley I don't know about? <laughs> would a Harley make Jean Rivera a bad boy? Well, I mean, bad boy, like, who do you think you are? Luke Perry? Like, what do you... <laughs> Who says that out loud? I mean, we all know I'm the bad boy of Survivor YouTubers, but that is totally different. Anyways, the plan stays true as Courtney votes out John Robert yet again, and Sharia is gone in a five to one vote. Sharia, chop spoken. Video. Episode 7 sees Courtney very upset with Todd and Amanda for not voting out John Robert by lashing out at them, and Todd says, yeah, he sucks, but he is a number that we need going into the merge. She says, these people suck, and they are not really my friends like they say they are. Once again, her lack of survivor knowledge is really shining through here as... Todd is right, they need numbers, otherwise they're gonna be picked off. Good timing in that merge talk too, as both tribes go to see Jeff and... Drop your buffs, you are merged. Oh my god! Oh, oh black, you guys! Use yeah. your buffs! Merge time. If Frosty flips back to John Hu, then they still have a 6-4 to four lead, so... We shall see what happens. Courtney's mood has been down since Sharia was kicked off, but this feast, oh, this is what she needed. We go in and we sit down at the table. I was pretty pumped because 
Boo challenges. Yay feast. They brought in five vegetarian dishes, five meat dishes, and we also got several choices of alcoholic beverage, which I enjoyed. I thought it was quite nice. Well, this is the best mood Courtney has been in all game. How long can it last though? Everyone goes back to camp where PG says, wow, your all shelter sucks. And Courtney says, no, your shelter sucks. And PG's like, no, this isn't my shelter. And Courtney's like, yeah, we all live together. This is our shelter now. I don't think PG got the joke. And John Rivera isn't even paying attention to this conversation because he immediately goes and takes a nap. But then in a surprise twist, Jeff shows up to camp and says, time for an immunity challenge based on the show you watched during the feast. And Courtney's like, crap, I wasn't paying attention to that. Frosty wins this. And then we see Amanda talk with James about how she worries about Courtney and Frosty's relationship. Pat is locked in now, but Courtney kind of has a mind of her own. She's like, well, you guys keep putting off everyone I like. You put it off Leslie. You put her, you want to put out Sharia. I'm like, Courtney, this is a game. Courtney's about to flip. Well, the problem is Courtney keeps getting close to people that we can't have here. I mean, we've done everything so good. If we put it in front of them, little skinny bitch was that flaky, we would have been got rid of her. She's supposed to be from New York. She's supposed to have some kind of city smarts. I know. You gotta watch Courtney because she is a loose cannon. She does stray off and fall in love with any swinging dick or Harry that, that floats and smiles at her. But damn, you don't get friends on, on Survivor. This ain't love connection. Ain't nobody trying to get a match or relationship. You're supposed to make the strongest team you can, align with some people you somewhat can trust to win a million dollars and stop playing around. That is a bit strange on its face, but at the same time, Courtney is a Survivor newbie, and if anything, this should secure his vote come Final Tribal, so it's not the worst move in the world. However, it still makes everyone else worried. Everyone decides that Jamie is the biggest target between her, PG, and Eric, so they all go to Tribal Council, and seemingly out of left field, John or Bear says, hey, Courtney needs to be worried about. She's not a threat to be voted out, and we should all be paying attention to this. I very much see Courtney making it down to the bottom two, bottom three, because she's not going to be perceived as the type of threat that James or myself might be. So now she's somebody that nobody's going to be gunning for for a while. I don't see her name showing up on a ballot for a long time. Courtney, you're rolling your eyes. Why? Because this is now Jean Robert trying to be like, the biggest threat in the room is the little blonde. Come on, everyone. <laughs> is the person who I don't get along with pointing out that all of a sudden I'm going to be the biggest threat there is on, it's just, it's funny. I, I didn't say she's gonna be the biggest threat, I said that it's likely she's gonna get the furthest. Which translates to you're a big threat. I don't think it does. It means that you're not a threat. Yeah, keep it. And same is true for several people in this group. James, why does that bother you? Yeah, I'm a bad, he just don't be quiet. I don't know, he just don't stop. That is a great turnaround by Courtney, though John Robert is technically right. This just isn't the forum to say this information. That's the stuff you say in one-on-one -on -one conversations back at camp. So everyone goes to vote and... The rules of Survivor state that if a hidden immunity idol is played, any votes cast against that person will not count, and the person with the next highest number of votes will be sent home. That's in the case of a hidden immunity idol being played. This, however, is not a hidden immunity idol. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh. Any votes cast against Jamie will count. Seventh person voted out of Survivor China and the first member of our jury. Jamie. Jamie, the job is spoken. I'm good to go. With that, we go to episode eight, knowing that barring an immunity run, PG and Eric should be goners. The next day at camp, we see PG trying to find any crack she can in this Fay Long alliance, and she goes for the obvious target, John Robert. She pitches to Denise and Courtney and says, hey, if we vote out John Robert before we vote out me, I will give you my vote come final tribal council. That's an intriguing offer, especially since Courtney already wants John Robert out anyways. What a win-win. At the immunity challenge, it is this very cool dragon that has barrels in it that the players sit on and essentially if you don't fall off, you win. Why am I talking in depth about a challenge in a Courtney video? Tries to recover, can't do it, Frosty's out. Courtney wins immunity. It's almost like a pageant. And now Courtney. Courtney, you are safe tonight at Tribal Council. I did win immunity today. I didn't think I would ever win anything, <laughs> so. I pretty much don't care at this point who gets voted out. I'm immune tonight, so can't get me. <laughs> A victory where Courtney was required to do absolutely nothing. 
Couldn't be more perfect. More challenges like this, please. Back at camp, Todd and Amanda tell Courtney that now is the time to blindside John or Bear. Since Frosty flipped to their side with him being Courtney's pseudo boyfriend, they are up seven to two and can afford this loss. So, at Tribal Council, it is Courtney versus her nemesis, John Robert. First vote, John Robert. PG, James, John Robert. Two votes, John Robert. James, James, Jean Robert, Jean Robert, eighth person voted out and the second member of our jury, Jean Robert, Jean Robert, job is spoken. Good morning, good morning, I come to say good morning, good morning, good morning to you. Everyone, it's Christmas. There's no Jean Robert in the bed! Camp Life without Jean Robert is much nicer. And I think that everyone else is also kind of happy to have him gone. James should be on America's Got Talent with that singing voice, but otherwise, yes, Courtney is in a great mood once again with her nemesis out of the game. Though now that the season's most obvious villain and punching bag is gone, will Courtney chill out or will she start directing her snark to people that end up labeling her as a villain? We see that Denise is mad that she wasn't in the loop on the Jean Robert vote, but Honestly, who cares? She lacks the backbone to ever flip or do anything about it, which we will see all season, especially if you watch the PG or Amanda story videos. But I must mention that with John Robert gone means PG will be voting for Courtney come final tribal, so that's a win. Should be voting for Courtney though is kind of the key. Todd then expresses the concern that Courtney and Frosty are too close for his liking, and through all of this, we have yet to hear from either of them about what they think about their own island fling. Well, we see her team win the reward challenge, and while on their river cruise, we see Courtney scratching Frosty's head, him giving her a massage, and finally, we hear from them about their relationship. I don't really understand my relationship with Frosty. He's young, he's only 20, and he's kind of cute. He just wants to play. I like Courtney a lot, and I think both of us feel that, and that's good. She's a really attractive girl, she's smart, uh, she's way out, out of my league, but uh, having somebody that you're just comfortable around is really nice. Back at camp, Todd informs them about the fight PG had with James while they were gone and yeah, it was a big one. Basically, PG is now the next to go. So at the immunity challenge, Jeff says, you can compete or sit out for food. Considering Courtney is not on the block to go home and she's like 70 pounds, she sits out for food. And when Jeff asks her about it. Courtney, how's that burger? Great. Unfortunately, PG wins immunity, so it is time for plan B. Todd asks Courtney, hey, would you be willing to vote out Frosty since he is a challenge threat? Not only winning one challenge, but coming in second today and literally doing backflips for fun throughout the season. She doesn't verbally commit to this, and then the show tries to splice together a confessional of Todd saying that he's considering voting out Courtney, and I have to mark this as dumb because that's what the show and the story wants us to think, but Really, it's not the truth. So anyways, Frosty is voted out seven to one. Frosty, tribe spoken. With cheeseburgers still on their breath. Time for you to go. Episode 10 is a recap that holds no bearing on the story being told, so we John Robert nap our way through that one into episode 11, where PG wins reward and takes Denise and Eric with her. Back at camp, Todd, Amanda, Courtney, and James all agree to be the final four, with James being super serious about this. James says this will be splendid as long as no one is tempted by the apple, aka no one is tempted to flip. He would say this though, as he has two idols, and if he reaches the final five, he's guaranteed final three. When PG, Eric, and Denise return, Courtney is cold, wet, and in a cave, and she says, no talking in the cave. Everyone annoys me. Amanda then talks to her outside of the cave, which is very smart on Amanda's part, and says we might consider voting on James next. We will still hold a four to two lead, and we can stop him from walking into the final tribal off the back of two idols. Courtney is in on this, but they have to keep it a secret from James, lest he pulls out an idol and saves himself. So at tribal council, they all go to vote. If anyone has a hidden immunity idol, now would be the time to play it. I'll read the votes. First vote, Todd, PG, James, James, two votes James, James, tenth person voted out and the fourth member of our jury, James, James, the tribe has spoken. 
time for you to go. The blind side worked and back at camp, everyone is amazed that this plan went off without a hitch. I mean, James still has his two idols. He's just out of the game with them. Oh, and this season, they don't replant the idols. Those are the only two. Courtney even sings a little song as if she were John Robert. We then go to the reward challenge, which as it turns out is the family visit. And when we meet Courtney's dad, my mind is blown. <laughs> <laughs> I'm English. I don't do. I don't do shorts. He's English. <laughs> is she adopted? Why is he super English and she's very much American? Todd then sees his sister, who informs him that his other sister had a miscarriage, and with that in mind, Denise wins her reward. So she takes Todd and Amanda with her back at camp. Eric and Courtney find Todd's story to be very strange. I gotta get this off my chest. I do not believe Todd's story. I could not believe that he like. Oh, my sister had an um, unplanned teenage pregnancy and then a convenient miscarriage. Gee whiz. Todd was going for the Oscar with his performance of my sister had a convenient miscarriage. And then, of course, Jeff was like, Todd, it looks like you just got some bad news. What happened? And Todd's like, my sister, she was pregnant and she she lost the baby, but it happened for a reason. Like, that is not like the fake Johnny Fairplay, my grandma died. You can almost forgive that, that's funny. Unlike Fairplay though, Todd is not lying. What he said is the truth, and this just makes Courtney's comments all the more cruel. And this is what I worried about would happen after John Robert was voted out. She has to focus her snark somewhere, and unfortunately, there's no one left who's an easy target. But anyways, once again, PG wins immunity to save her hide, and at Tribal Council, Eric is voted out in a four to two vote. Eric, the tribe has spoken. With episode 13 comes time for a mini reevaluation in terms of Courtney's game. Her best bet right now is to vote up PG since three people are on the jury from her old tribe and then Todd. Believe it or not, he is the ringleader of Faye Long and he is more likely to be able to appeal to the jury than Amanda based on what we have seen so far. The reality is, is that no matter who Courtney sits next to at this point, she will have a hard time, but she should have PG and Frosty's votes if she plays her cards right. At the reward challenge, I can't tell if this is on purpose or if Courtney's aim is just that bad, but she kind of gives Denise the win. So Denise picks her and Todd to go to the Great Wall of China. An epic reward if I say so. I am super jealous. They get some raw meat that they can cook themselves and they get to stay overnight as well. However, when they return back to camp, they complain about this. They made these boiled meat sandwiches and Todd ate it all on the plane. So I'm like, okay, so we're not bringing anything back. They come back from the Great Wall and they were complaining the food, nobody explained to them how to eat it and they didn't like the food and it's like, come on. Todd and Courtney still find things to complain about when they win a reward. It, it just blows my mind. Some people are so ungrateful and honestly, it made me mad. Now, how does one complain about a free trip to the Great Wall? I would say they had unmet expectations, but that is something you keep to yourself in the game as others are already jealous of you. So at the immunity challenge, Amanda wins and secures that PG is a goner, which is what Courtney needed. Believe it or not, at Tribal Council, Courtney complains about the food again, and this just gets under PG's skin. Food proved to be a little confusing for the three of us. Like, you know, I consider myself a pretty adventurous eater, but you know, when your body wants things that it recognizes, it's, it's kind of frustrating. It's just for me, it just gets really frustrating because I am one of those positive people and I've been fighting hard every day and to hear somebody say, well, I kind of tend to be negative about things and I kind of haven't really cared about the game. I'm only here because other people have let me stay in it. It's just really frustrating. I mean, keep it to yourself, Courtney. Just stop while you're ahead. PG is a much needed jury vote and annoying her on the way out the door is not a good game move, but PG is voted out four to one. 12th person voted out, the sixth member of our jury. PG, PG, the tribe has spoken. Time for you to go. Finale time. It is Todd versus Amanda versus Courtney versus Denise. Who will make the final three and win it all? Let's find out. Right away, Courtney says, I am so excited to be in the final four and I hope to keep slipping through the cracks into the final three. By the way, John Robert was right. She did exactly what he predicted. Todd and Amanda have a conversation where Todd tells her that they are solid, but then Courtney spies on him and Denise, overhearing them, Sandra Diaz twine in the Pearl Island style, as he promises Denise things too 
Todd is a slimy schemer. The best move now is to make sure Todd gets voted out, but that isn't happening if Courtney has anything to say about it. Amanda wins immunity, and she talks to Courtney about making this move, and Courtney says, no way, let's vote out Denise. I'm voting for Denise tonight. You are too? Okay. I mean, obviously I want to win, but if I have to lose this summer, I don't want to lose to Denise. Are you kidding me? This isn't like welfare. Uh -uh. You know, like she doesn't deserve it just because, you know, she sucks at life. I know we like have this in the pot, you know, but everyone likes Todd. I know, but Denise is gonna cry. But Denise has no connection with anyone on there. He's a schemer. Yeah, but everyone likes him. He's connected with that? people like I haven't connected with people yet. But you know, Todd and Keegan Sugar put them so well. I don't think Courtney is in any real danger, but at Tribal Council, she makes a great sales pitch saying, I don't think the jury will vote for me. I'm a prime candidate to take to the end. And she says this all with a lot of charisma and charm that I think should worry others. Charisma and charm can go a long way. But then the moment of truth, Denise is voted out three to one. 13th person voted out, the seventh member of our jury. Denise, the tribe has spoken. It is now day 39 and with that comes a scrumptious breakfast. Courtney is satisfied, win or lose, she doesn't care because she reached her goal in the game. China's been a, a crazy experience for me. I'm glad that, you know, China was as hard as it was. Like, it rained, it was so hot. You know, it is like a building experience. I'm proud of myself and I, I can't believe it. Like, my final goal was to make the final three. And I just, I think I do have really good personal relationships on the jury. I have never, been anything but my own winsome personality that has been called every name in the book since day one. So hopefully, I mean, hopefully that'll get some credit. I made it this far and that should get some respect from some people. Welcome to your final tribal council. It is time, final tribal council. Time to sway the jury to vote for you over your competitors for the title of Soul Survivor and the $1 million prize. Everyone starts with their opening speeches and for Courtney, she says she came into Survivor not knowing what to do. So it was tougher for her than anyone else here. Um, unlike the other two people sitting here, I was not a lifelong Survivor fan no strategy, no idea what I was doing, and I, every single time that I didn't get voted out, I was actually surprised. So that's what sets me apart from these two guys. I figured out how to survive in a game that was completely physical in the beginning. I started the game weighing 95 pounds, and I was physically scared to be in this game in the beginning. I had to figure out a way to just somehow manage to make it work for me, and I did that. Around the time of the merge, things changed and I sort of caught my footing a little bit better. I did win a, a personal immunity, so whoever saw that coming, not me, I was surprised. I made good alliances that worked for me. I was always pretty upfront, as much as you can be in this scenario, and I'm really proud of myself. And I think that, you know, whether or not you like me personally, you have to give a little bit of credit to the little girl who everyone thought would be gone in the first six days and is still sitting here on day 39. I will give her credit, Courtney is being honest, but I am not sure what juror wants to reward someone for not knowing what to do and then figuring it out along the way. This is a time where Survivor's already aired 14 seasons, plus some of the seasons are on DVD at this time, and the show does make you watch it before you go on, even if you're recruited. James is the first juror and the only person he asks a question of is Courtney, and this is a great sign. I think one of the best times I had was the, actually the very first challenge that our team did together because when I picked up the pole the first time, I was like, sweet mother of God, this thing weighs 50 pounds, I'm gonna die. And then when we actually won it in the end and I stuck the thing in, I was like, I'm not gonna be the first person voted out of Survivor. Oh my God, this is crazy. As I said, she has charisma for days and I think she's getting James' vote now, so she might have three. John Robert is second and he basically says, all three of you suck and I don't wanna vote for any of you. Long story short, Courtney and Amanda's answers to him as to why they are deserving are average at best in comparison to Todd's. You started to strategically place ideas in people's heads which is what I wanted my job to be. 
And when you had approached me about blindsiding James, I was like, oh no, he's catching up. So who then becomes the biggest threat to me? You. What do I have to do? Turn it around on you, who is an extremely great strategic player in your daily life. I had to get rid of my biggest strategic threat, who is you. <laughs> that was a good answer. <laughs> I shut it off. <laughs> Isn't that noise? <laughs> shut him up. I know. I'm in awe. Shut his mouth. <laughs> shut his mouth. <laughs> shut his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> PG is the third juror and she asked Todd and Amanda a question, but not Courtney. This is bad because Courtney could have had PG's vote, but I think all of her actions post John Robert being voted out did nothing to help her case. Eric is the fourth juror and he only asked Amanda a question, which she answers impressively. Not great, but I don't think Eric was a vote that Courtney was going to get. Frosty is the fifth juror and he should be a ringer for Courtney. He even flirts with her and everything. Courtney, what's up? How you doing? You look great. Uh, Thanks. Dressed up for you. <laughs> Amanda, I assumed was gonna lie and backstab me eventually. Todd, I knew was gonna lie and backstab me eventually. But you actually, interestingly enough, surprised me when you lied and backstabbed me just a little bit. You also flat out said to me, unprovoked, that if my name came up with other people, you would tell me. Um, no, everyone was in a blind panicked frenzy that I wouldn't vote for you. And so all eyes were sort of on me. And I, I mean, if I pulled you aside, it, you know, it might have made you feel a little bit better, or a little bit worse, but I don't, I mean, I don't know that it would have changed any outcome. But it wasn't like I went out and aggressively befriended you just to take you out of the game and then like, oh, good pocket juror. That's just, that's not what happens. If Courtney this season knew how the game worked, I really think she has a case to be winning here. But she has thrown away two jurors and I don't think she really cares or knows what she did. Jamie is the sixth juror and this is brutal. She asks each of them why they should get her vote over the other two. Courtney basically says Todd did all the work. Why we shouldn't vote for him, but we should vote for you. Um, well, he organized voting out John Bear, then he organized voting out Frosty, and then he helped Amanda with voting out James. So he deserves a million dollars more than you do? Is that what you're saying? I think that each one of us has a different reason that we are deserving. And exactly, but why is he not deserved? I think he might be deserving. I think it's an equal So Todd should get my million dollar vote? If that's the okay, way Todd. Know. Courtney's voted the same as me pretty much the whole time. I mean, I may have made the lies up and coordinated them. She's voted as me, so she's just as much of a liar as I am. Not the reason why her. you should not vote for Courtney yes. is because she didn't want to be here in the first place. I feel like Courtney is ungrateful. When she'd come back from awards, she'd just complain. And I honestly, at, at the beginning, I didn't feel like Courtney deserved to be here because I didn't feel like she put her heart into anything she did here. I would say that they definitely played their game strategically, but I played mine more strategically. Yeah, I think Courtney might be finishing with one jury vote at this point. At least it seems that way until Denise stands up as the final juror and she dumps on Todd and Amanda but says, I respect you, Courtney. Not bad. Not bad at all. So everyone goes to vote and then we cut to the live reunion where Jeff reveals who won Survivor China. First vote. Courtney. Amanda. Todd. Courtney. Todd. Todd. Winner of Survivor China. So let's break this down. How is Courtney as a character? In my opinion, Courtney is all character. Did she get to the end and finish in second, only losing by two votes? Yes. Did she do it with great strategic gameplay? Arguably, no. But she did play a game where her charisma and charm and lack of fakeness when interacting with others made her come across as genuine, and that is a real life trait most people find appealing and cannot be underrated. I know I value it. With John Robert as the proverbial punching bag, she was able to use her quick wit and snark to dunk on him time and time again until he was voted out, and then she had no one to direct her ire towards. Still, she was entertaining whenever she was on screen, and she elevates the season as a whole. Out of 26 character moments shown on the show, 15 were anti-heroic and 11 were villainous, making Courtney Yates an anti-hero on Survivor China. Now, how is Courtney as a strategist? As I mentioned before, she beats Amanda and only loses to Todd by two votes. A Courtney who is game savvy should have locked up a win here. She threw away Frosty's vote, who was a vote for Todd, and failed to capitalize on PG after John Robert's voted out. 
guess what? PG also voted for Todd. Now, PG's promise to vote for her may have just been dust in the wind, but I don't know about that. PG seems like she is honest to a fault in most cases, and I think she would have stayed true if Courtney didn't ruin their relationship. However, Courtney did play a solid game, and I cannot ignore that. She kept the target offer back, and despite being on the outs in the pre-merge, she made the right moves in the post-merge to take over Amanda's spot as Todd's right-hand girl. Not a bad game at all, it just leaves room for improvement with a potential win. Out of 47 strategic moments shown on the show, 25 were smart and 22 were dumb, making Courtney Yates a smart strategist on Survivor China. I want to thank you all for watching and doubly thanks for liking and subscribing. See you all next time.